he's really excited about this club right now and, and what they can be by the end of the season. He truly believes they're going to upset some teams, uh, as they, especially getting the Pac-12 play. He knows they're young right now. They have to gel together as he's been getting a couple of key pieces back that we're going to see here this evening. Sonano doesn't even jump. I love that. Yelena Mitrovic is 6'9", and Sonano was just kind of <laughs> laughing out there. She's like, no. She's going to get back on defense, right? <laughs> yes. And there's Mitrovic. Doubled right away, and Sonano gets the rebound. And Lisa Luter talked about Mitrovic and, and just her size and how much of a load she's going to be inside for them. And really, overall, Oregon State's length. And that's something Sonano's been working on. If she wants to play pro ball, needs to, most of her points, the vast majority coming inside the paint. She's trying to extend her range. Yeah, Lisa Bluter talking to us about one of the things she wanted to do and coming back for this extended period of time is work on that range, knock down some outside shots. Here she is, number 22. Caitlin Clark kicking it out. Three ball for Gabby Marshall. And that's big. I mean, you see Caitlin Clark is the ultimate facilitator as well. We talk so much about her scoring, but she makes the right play. She draws multiple defenders, and she finds Gabby Marshall. And Steph, she accounts for 46% of their points. So again, to your point, a true point guard that's not going to force it, but will get her team involved. Average eight assists per game last year. That was first in the country. And... Ben Duyaney getting the start, the Arizona transfer who is from right here in Portland. And that's the key piece that I thought for Oregon State coming in because I expect this matchup throughout the game. Ben Duyaney on Caitlin Clark, a physical defender, but can she keep her in front of her? Yeah, Clark was able to get around her. Missed her first shot. Mitrovic gets it over to Yaney, who was on those really good Arizona teams, the national runner-up a couple of years ago. Coming back to her home state to use up her final year of eligibility. Left wide open. To Alexis Aaron with the miss. And now here's Clark being aggressive to the hoop. And Scott Rowe told us we cannot allow them to get out in transition. He can't be happy about how easy that was for Caitlin Clark to get to the rim. And Christy, I, like, I watching Caitlin Clark this year, she's much more on balance when she's attacking the paint. In times in the past, you could see her maybe throw up some shots, fall to the ground, but now finishing strong off of two feet. And getting to the free, line, free throw line, as you said, because you can try to defend her, but how many times are these undisciplined defenders bailing her out yes. with silly fouls? She gets to the line over 10 times per game so far in the season, and that's the connection. Clark to Sonano, who was fouled. Well, Caitlin Clark is going to be one of those players who just demands so much attention. And here in transition, you have to respect her ability to step back and shoot that three. And you see the collapse. Three defenders on her. She makes the right play. She finds Gabby Marshall. Gabby Marshall has not shot the ball particularly well this season, but that is what she does best. And Caitlin Clark found her. And Marshall shooting, pardon me, just 30% and on the season 20% from range. What I was going to say is both the assist and that finish, tremendous change of pace mm -hmm. with the ball in her hands. Sonano, who was fouled by Mitrovic, delivered at the line. And Pam, my big question for Oregon State coming in this game is could they score and keep up with Iowa? Because you can score against this Iowa team, but you've got to be ready to score. And in that situation, you're open, feet aren't set, you travel. Melissa Barlow, Tiffany Bird, and Brian Hall, our officials this evening. When you saw in that possession what I was trying to do with Van Olhoffen on the on-ball screen, they're not going to let her come off of it. So especially on this side of the floor, they're icing or downing that screen, forcing her into help defense. Lisa Bluter in her 23rd year in charge of Iowa. Team that lost at Kansas State earlier this season. But they were number four in the preseason, their highest preseason ranking since 1994. Warnock with the drive and the finish. Well, they've been tested. I mean, they play tough teams on the road. You go to K-State, you go on the road and play Drake. I mean, they have, they have been tested. And Lisa Bluter said that I think we're going to be ready to play in this type of environment. It's a neutral floor, but certainly we're in the state of Oregon. As you can well hear. Beaverton is about an hour and a half away from Portland if the traffic isn't terrible. That's a travel 
on Sonano. And I gotta say, true point guard Caitlin Carter's like, what are you talking about? That's a travel. <laughs> That's an assist. That was my assist. <laughs> And it's very interesting to me. We don't, didn't even get three minutes into this game, and Reagan Beers has checked in. I'm eager to see how Scott Ruick uses her offensively because she does have three-point range. And we saw in the K-State loss for Iowa, that's how they exploited Sonano. They pulled her out away from the basket. Oregon State finally gets on the board. Lisa Bluter talked about that game and said, you know, it almost hurt us that Aoka Lee wasn't playing because they went small, they spread us out, they attacked us in a different way. Gabby Marshall fouled Von Olhoffen. To the uh, sophomore, completes a three-point play. All Pac-12 performer last year, led the team in scoring. Here's Caitlin, now guarded by Noel Madden. And the tie up, the Beaver fans love it. And Madden's a great story. Transferred from San Francisco, walked on and just received a scholarship. And I say it again, no point guard likes a little That's point guard awesome. defending them because you've got to pound that ball to the ground so quickly against the tiny defenders. Now Yaney is back on. The defensive assignment for Clark. Well, Caitlin Clark's going to see a lot of different players on her. They're going to give her so many different looks. And that's great rotation by Manning. The drop pass wasn't there because she snuck in. And let's be frank, to beat Iowa, you can't just worry about going one-on-one. -on -one. It's got to be that team defense. Three ball from Shalexis Aaron. Scott Ruick has lost a lot of parts to the transfer portal the last couple of years, and he is so excited about both Aaron and Yaney. They missed throughout the preseason due to injury, but they're back, and he thinks they can come up big for him. And Clark tried a long three. She missed everything to the delight of the Oregon State fans. Well, they're the most experienced players on, you know, on the floor, and, and you look at when you have a young roster, it's particularly in different environments. Now they're taking on a challenge of playing against Iowa. You need that experience. You need that calm voice. You need playmakers in those moments, whether it's offensively or defensively. Now inside De Beers, defended by O'Grady. Madison O'Grady, number 44. Gives Iowa some quality minutes, and that's a quality move by Clark. And then again, you see the balance going off of two feet, makes the spin move, still able to split defenders. And Steph, double team came. Yeah. Double team was set in there, and she just glided by them. That broke a 6 nothing Oregon State run. Beers, Warnock came in and forced the turnover. We knew that Caitlin Clark would show up big here this evening. And she's been dynamic so far. The reverse spin move and step by the bigger defender for the soft finish. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Nike. Just do it. Let's go back to last year's NCAA tournament second round in Iowa City against Creighton. Monica Sonano makes that shot probably 99 times out of 100. But it did not fall, neither did the follow, and the Hawkeyes in a game you did, Christy, lost to Creighton, a big upset in the second round. Yeah, Monica Sonano had a huge night, but unfortunately, Caitlin Clark was off. And how? Because Creighton got really physical with her. And it was one of those games where Lisa Bluter was really frustrated with the officiating. And so, as great as Caitlin Clark is, I gotta believe she learned a lot from that loss, as all great players do. Absolutely. And of course, Monica Sonano electing to come back using her extra year of eligibility and certainly have to think that this is an Iowa team that feels like there was some unfinished business. It's a team that won the Big Ten tournament title and tied the regular season title with Ohio State. Got the high seed and fell to the Blue Jays, who were one of the Cinderella's of last year's NCAA tournament. Iowa has checked in Molly Davis 
number one, and uh, she's a player who is a transfer from Central Michigan, brings a lot of experience. And as Lisa Booter said, spunk to her team as well. Coaches like spunk? Coaches <laughs> love spunk. I feel like we also use that term for smaller players as well. But face guarding right now on the wing of Van O'Hoppen. You gotta deliver that pass. I mean, there was a clear advantage inside for Beers. Gotta be able to get her the ball. We're already seeing the chess match between yep. the coaches. Oregon State going really big now in the low post. Playing Beers along with Mitrovic. Scott Ruick, who is an Oregon native, did great things at George Fox for getting the job at Oregon State. And Pam, all he has done is, this program is really in trouble mm -hmm. when he took over, and he has made them a national name. I can't say enough great things about Scott Ruick and the, how tremendous of an X and O coach as well as recruiter he is. Mr. Down Low. And Deers battling down low now with Warnock. Yeah, that's a lot of contact, and they get Deers. So much about the success of post players down low, not just doing your work early, but being able to get the ball to them when they're open, right? The timing of, of, of how to get the ball, when to get the ball, where to get the ball to them. Right away, you got to get it to her. And when you don't, Warnock just continues to work, continues to fight, and draws the foul. Hey, and for young players out there, Warnock got away with a little bit beforehand, and then Beers was <laughs> responding, and that's what always gets caught. Caitlin Clark takes a seat on the bench. Gabby Marshall back in. There's Molly Davis. Kicking it out. Sydney Falter with the miss. So what does Iowa do offensively with Caitlin Clark on the bench? 11 points in the game. She is responsible for nine of those, either her own points or off of her assists. Getting it into Mitrovic, who was able to collect it. Well, an Iowa team that runs a lot of that motion offense. They're going to have to get more player movement. The ball's getting stuck right now. You can't play all in on ball screen action as Gabby Marshall gets an easy two there. But one of the best things that they do is that dribble, dribble at backdoor action. And with a big lineup like Oregon State has, you get the backdoor cut, you make that pass, you draw a secondary defender, then you have the pitch or the drop off. So basically you're saying be patient. Move is what I'm saying. <laughs> Move. <laughs> Rebound taken down by a falter. And a long three by Warnock, barely took the front of the rim. But for Iowa, if Oregon State's gonna go big like this, they've gotta be able to knock down that shot. Yeah, and Iowa haven't had a lot of ball reversals. They've been getting a one side, one side offense, taking shots right away. I think they've gotta make Oregon State work a little more as Van Olhoffen gets a three right there. Now this is an Iowa offense that can score quickly, but sometimes you need to put some pressure on the defense. Molly Davis knocking down the three, her fourth of the season. Iowa coming in four and one on the year. Caitlin Clark, not much of a break. She's gonna come in, as will Hannah Stolke, a freshman from Cedar Rapids. I like this look right here. It's not there, then you gotta get it moving again. Or knock it down. Or, or if you're Reagan Bears, just keep doing what you've been doing, right. freshman. Knock it down. The reigning big, or a Pac-12 freshman of the week. It's a big Pac-12. A big Pac-12, and she's a big time player from the state of Colorado. I like Manning's toughness on the floor. <laughs> Davis dribbling right through, they need a shot. Warnock gets it up and in. And that's subtle by Molly Davis, but did not kill her dribble. That's a veteran point guard move. Continued with the handle, found her open shooter. Well, we were talking about this in, in the last game, right? The difference in a veteran point guard that keeps your dribble alive, work around the baseline, probe and find the open player. Hey. Bank it in. Mitrovic. Her first th made three of the season. Shot clock is off. 
Doesn't look like Caitlin Clark's going to get back in the game until the second quarter. She's been sitting over there for a while, but we haven't had a stoppage in play. And Oregon State going zone, end of quarter. Shot clock's winding down. Gabby Marshall, short. Mitrovic gathers, and that's the end of a very closely contested first quarter. Well, we wondered, could Oregon State score and stay with Iowa? Yelling at Mitrovic is saying, oh yeah, give me the rock from deep with the bank open. Welcome back to Portland, Oregon State trailing Iowa by three after one. And uh, coming into this building, some nostalgia for head coach Scott Ruick for Oregon State. He pointed exactly to the seat where he was sitting when his sister played in a state championship high school game here back in 1990. Lincoln High School. I mean, it, it, you could almost feel the moment as Scott was explaining the story. He said there was only one scoreboard that we have above us here this afternoon. And he said, they're just dribbling around. They're down one. And he said, the crowd's counting, but you can't hear anything. And his sister jacked up a shot, which didn't go in. I know I was setting that up for great drama. But the rebound put back with one second to go went in. And Glencoe High School was celebrating. But the better part of that story was she was coached by a male coach. And Scott said, I learned at a young age that coaching women in the state of Oregon was cool. And... He is a tremendous teacher and coach of women in Oregon today as well. And you could, as you said, you could just see the pride and he pointed exactly to the seat where he was sitting. It's uh, behind us and to our left here at where the campus of the University of Portland. And he just loves coaching women's basketball and he's done a great job in his home state. Iowa coming to the zone out of the timeout. We can get out far enough on Van Olhoffen. Scott Ruick says that this young lady, she's as gifted as anybody I've ever coached, which is saying something. And he said a straight face, because I thought for a moment, considering some of the greats he's had, that he was like, maybe, but he said right now she is. Caitlin Clark. And so much room for growth. Yeah, that's just a sophomore. We've seen Iowa throughout the season mix up between their man and their zone, but you certainly have to find the shooters, and that's a great closeout. That's Molly Davis. I mean, that's how you pursue, right? Get there quickly, just when you think the shot's going to get off. Watch Molly Davis. She stunts, and then she recovers and gets a hand on the ball. Coach Bluter talked about her high basketball IQ, and... Now she came to Iowa knowing she wasn't going to start, and yet she still came anyway from Central Michigan. Aaron couldn't gather. Ball goes over the Hawks. Steph, I feel like so far at this point in the season, it could be just learning the system. I expected Molly Davis to run a lot of points for them to give Caitlin Clark a breather. I haven't seen it to this point in the season. I think that will be key for Iowa as they progress through the season, being able to give Caitlin quality blows while she's on the floor. Yeah, I think it's hard to take the ball out of Caitlin Clark's hands, certainly, but particularly when you can get in a flow, like if you get a rebound or you can quick outlet and Molly Davis can initiate and Caitlin Clark can run the floor, you're absolutely right. It is difficult to have the ball in your hands as much as Caitlin Clark does. She doesn't really get anything easy. Nice follow from Aaron. And that ties the ball game up. But these are those situations. And you can run some quick screens for Caitlin Clark, and she's not having to create so much yeah. on her own. I just feel like it's the wear and tear, not just yeah. throughout a game, but throughout a season, that that helps her. It helps her stay fresher. It helps her, obviously, be a better scorer. And they can utilize her in different ways. And Lisa Bluter talked about teams are going to face guard her, so sometimes that's why she brings it up. But if they're going to face guard her, she can cut back door. She's been working on her post-up game. Run some, some screen the screener actions, some curl pop actions. Utilize her as a screener. Marshall got her hands on the basketball to force the turnover. Nice. And Martin and the Sinano. 
But again, there was just that little hesitation that forced uh, Mitrovic to come over that left Sonano open on the weak side. And we talk so much about Caitlin Clark and Monica Sonano, but the Gabby Marshalls and the Kate Martins and the McKenna Warnocks, I mean, those guys make this team go. They fill in the roles. They surround those two with, with solid, consistent veteran leadership. And you see it here. Martin just hesitates. That pulls the post defender. No dropping on the weak side. Sonano open. Sonano committed the foul on the other end that sends Alexis, Shalexis Aaron, pardon me, to the free throw line, a transfer from USC. So how do you feel about the pace right now and who it favors? I think it favors Oregon State. Absolutely. If you're Iowa, you want to get up and down the floor, you want to get some quick shots, you want to get some movement. Well, Lisa Bluter talked about this offense and how it's going to take some time for some new pieces and for them to get into a flow and rhythm. But this possession is the first time we've seen the ball cross the mid-floor multiple times. Sonano turns, fires over Mitrovic. And that's the key for Sonano right now with Mitrovic in the game. you got to pull her away. You don't just want to try to challenge her down low. Too much of a size advantage and or I, disadvantage. You can put her in, in some on-ball screen situations. It doesn't have to be in the middle of the floor with no pass in offense. It can be on the back side. And that's an example of moving without the basketball. Great job by Aaron to cut back door. Even better pass. Knocks the game back up, and here's a Clark three from long distance, off the mark, but Kate Martin was there. I don't think she realized how open she was. A little bit of a hesitation, and now Sonano gets on the floor for a tie up. She may not have realized how open she was, but Van Ollenhofen did. That was tremendous recovery to get that block. Now Stolke goes out of the game for Iowa. Beers coming back in, this time replacing Mitrovic. Clark defended by Yaney. Going to be so good. Yep. I mean, right there, she had an opportunity to tight curl and potentially draw a secondary defender, but when she gets the ball, she doesn't need a lot of space. She takes great angles to get by defenders. Oh, that's a terrific drive. And Olhoffen already into double figures. Leading this team, averaging 19 and a half points per game. Caitlin. Martin's second chance, Clark buries it. Kate Martin, that's two big offensive rebounds. Didn't get the conversion on one, but just, you cannot afford to give a great scoring team multiple possessions. Highest percentage three in basketball. Rebound kick out. That's right. Clark now into double figures and then called for the hand check. Well, Caitlin Clark can certainly put on a clinic offensively. You see how she uses her body, quick spin move, and the angle to the rim. And Von Olhoffen, again, the angles, you see how they sever. They keep the defender on their side, back behind them, and then Caitlin Clark, she can't have that much time and space. She's money. Well, your point about angles, I think it's a really difficult defensive battle for both these teams, because if you give body, that's playing into the offensive players to be able to cut that angle and keep you pinned behind them. Well, when we talk so much uh, about straight line drives and what it means, I mean, those are two players right there who are efficient. When they get by defenders, they keep them behind them. They don't banana cut it off. Here is working hard. Clark pulls it, nails it. You can get a sense of those rhythm dribbles when Caitlin Clark comes down the floor when she's starting to feel it. And Lisa Bluteris says that because she knows when Caitlin's about to shoot the basketball. Well, that's a good coach, right? And she lets her. She's like, <laughs> yeah. fine by me. Sonano and Beers, the veteran against the freshman. I love the three-point shot, but I could watch Beers and Sonano go at it. 
knocked that one in. I think there would have been an explosion in this building. Whoa, Clark ran right into Beers. There was no whistle, but a travel call. Well, Steph started the game talking about we all know about the logo threes. Oregon State may not have got the message on this one. Caitlin Clark from deep. Welcome back. Start of the show talking about how dynamic Caitlin Clark is, how unselfish she is. Coming in 46% of total points is Caitlin Clark. Well, she hasn't disappointed. Showing the plethora of moves, taking what the defense gives her. If you play her tight, she's going by you. If she gets a step, she's not relenting. And oh, yeah, when she crosses half court, she's money. Caitlin Clark with 10 points in this second quarter. So is there a a proper way to defend her. This is uh, her numbers so far, because we said if you're too close, like Ganey has been a little bit too close, but if you get too far away, she's gonna pull it and knock down the three. Yeah, you just have to try to make her hit tough shots. I mean, she, she's she's a shot maker. That's what she does. And, and as long as they're contested, as long as you're not bailing her out, you gotta be tight enough, certainly, to contest a three-point shot. And if she makes it over the top of you, fine, she does. What you don't wanna do is allow her to get by and just pick you apart and then play soft and she gets open looks. Like, that's like a that. shot that she's gonna make. Now, if I'm playing Caitlin Clark in that situation, I'm not letting her come off the screen. Anytime you're playing her, I would I would not allow her to use the screen. But that's a tough one that, that right there because it's such that tight window, so there is no time for help. They that scouted was that play. A time they scouted execution. that play. Well, that's what I was going to say. Oregon State knew it was coming, couldn't do anything about it. But we've seen now in back-to-back -back ball games, out of timeouts, really isoing on those elbows. Yeah, this is one of those right here. When you give her the ball, you've got to wall up right here and make her go the other direction. Ice that screen, down that screen. But that comes with communication. Those bigs have to call that. You have to know that it's coming. Sonano setting that screen for Clark. And Beer stayed back, and, and that's just this point. It's got to be team defense against Caitlin Clark. Absolutely. Well, that's a nice play by Martin after she was bottled up, got it over. Made the pass, a chance for a three-point play for Sonano. Just great unselfish play. Rotation occurs, and we've seen it time and time again. If you don't get the drop off of the weak side rotation, Sonano is too strong, and that's way too late. Melissa Bluter talked to us just about how important it is because they are so big. You can't go in there and try to shoot over the top of them. You've got to be able to find the next pass, whether it's a pitch for a three or a drop right there like like that for Sonano. More good defense this time by Marshall. Iowa's hit four of their last five shots. Sonano left open. Bottom of the net, another assist for Clark. And Oregon State has seen enough as the lead is ballooned to nine. Well, Caitlin Clark, one of the best in the country at filling it up, but she's also one of the best in the country at finding her open teammates. And Monica Sanano showing her range. We've got men's basketball going on in Portland as well. Coming up 9.30 Eastern time on ESPN. That's the bottom of the hour. UConn takes on Alabama. Brandon Miller coming off a nice game in the quarterfinal. This is quite a weekend in Portland. Pitch left open. Caitlin Clark comes up with the rebound and kind of a nervous time right now for Oregon State. There was the block by Mitrovic as the Lead is now nine points. Now, here's the key. We talked about, like, against Sonano, pull her out, bigs make those shots, or your wings make those shots. But it also hurts you from a rebound perspective. Trip before last, Mitrovic takes that outside shot. There are no rebounders for Oregon State, and that allows Iowa to get out and run. Clark just getting around Yaney like she's invisible. Makes it look, she's just so fluid. 
And right now she's playing at such a great pace. And I think any time we see Caitlin Clark struggle a little bit, it's when she gets rushed. But she's playing at a great pace. She's utilizing her angles really well. She's utilizing her in, her, in and out dribble. And Bindu Yaney is an excellent defender. Thank you. That's what I want to say. When you, we're saying it looks easy. That's just how good Caitlin Clark yes. is. Marshall taking it to Van Olhoffen. But there were a lot of Beavers who came in out of nowhere. They built a dam. Yes, they did. <laughs> and Marshall was just, just got out of that dam. She just crossed half court a little while ago. AJ Marat with the miss, but a second chance. And then Warnock with the foul in front of the Iowa bench. Well, Caitlin Clark right here, you just see using the on-ball screen. She doesn't need a lot of time or space. She is quick off the bounce. I love how she just uses that last dribble to stretch and gain a little bit more space. Well, I think that's an undersold part of her game mm -hmm. is her ability to create space, whether it's the step back, her lateral dribble, as well as just as dangerous. And I think Iowa can do even more of that drag screen higher on the floor. You don't have to wait till the three-point line. Hit somebody at half court. Because she can hit a logo three. Because she can hit a logo yeah. three. Davis back into the game. Keeping the dribble alive. Clark rescues. And then Caitlin Clark, who says, I didn't touch it. Ball stays with the Beavers. Clark, a very fiery player. That was another interesting thing when we talked to Scott Ruick the other day. I thought Caitlin was a little bit misunderstood. She's fiery on the floor, a little edge, a little Tarasi-like attitude, but he said she's really just ultra competitive and a nice kid. He said her mindset puts her over the top. He, and he, this, this is how he closed it. He said, and her right hand's just magic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he uh, would have loved to have brought her west. Aaron did some nice things offensively for the Beavers. And then that's the third three that she's hit. So Iowa has to be a little bit more aware of where she is on the three-point line and close out quicker. Sonano has been working on that little jumper, hasn't she? Hey, Big Ten, get ready for it. Monica Sonano is added to the repertoire. So the shot clock is off now. Oregon State down seven. And Ohoffen guarded by Davis. Loses the ball and then Clark gets the block to end the first quarter. Caitlin Clark and Monica Sinano combining for 31 of Iowa's points. They take a seven point lead into the locker room. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. It is nighttime in Portland, Oregon. That's the Willamette River and Iowa with the lead at the half. Caitlin Clark being Caitlin Clark, boy, to Leah Van Olhoffen, very special for Oregon State as well. And you see both teams are putting up some threes and knocking them down, but Iowa with the seven-point advantage as we hit the second half. Pam Ward along with Christy thomas Scuddy and Stephanie White. And uh, Caitlin Clark, a little bit of a slow start, but came alive in that second quarter. You're not going to keep her down for long, are you? <laughs> no. We talk so much about her scoring ability, but her ability to facilitate is also exceptional. She just does such an outstanding job of finding her teammates. She draws multiple defenders. We're going to see her in a screen and roll right here. Two players go to Caitlin Clark, but look at her eye. She has an eye on where McKenna Warnock is. She's able to deliver the pass to her and Warnock able to get to the rim and to score. And the straight line drives using her angles, getting by defenders. One, two, three people collapse and Caitlin Clark making the right play, finding the open Gabby Marshall who knocks down the three. And for Oregon State, they have stayed in this game because of the getting hot from the three-point line. They are six of 11. They've only made a total of 14 field goals, but the big one has been Shalix Aaron. Came in over for the game already, three of four here this afternoon. How can Oregon State continue to generate some offense? Aaron already 
with 15 points, 15 of their 37. That is a new season high for her. Winner of this game gets UConn on Sunday afternoon. Peyton Clark in Iowa, you might recall, were eliminated by the Huskies in the Sweet 16 a couple of years ago in the NCAA tournament when it was Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark to a great freshman matchup at that time. And the Beavers, well represented, good crowd here. This is a nice gym, trial center on the campus of the University of Portland. Seats about 5,000 people, which is about 1,000 more students than they have at this small but effective university. And and we gets, are underway. I was going to say, when it gets loud, it gets loud in here. As we heard a couple of runs by Oregon State in the first half. Warnock right away attacking the glass. And Warnock part of that supporting cast. Her numbers aren't going to like raise alarm bells, but does a lot of the little things for the Hawkeyes. It takes a team. And so as much as the tension as Sonano and Caitlin Clark get, everyone else knows their role and they are ready to step up when needed. Clark. Nice pass. But there's the defense. Gabby Marshall left it short. Good defense by Mitrovic, who we remind you is 6'9". Gabby Marshall continuing to be a pest. There you see Mitrovic at 6'9", making 6'3", Monica Sonano look small. Small. <laughs> yes. How I feel when I stand next to you. <laughs> You're a beast, Pam. <laughs> that just ticked the bottom of the net for Ben Duyaney, again, a Portland native who played her first four years at Arizona, coming back to her home state, has missed all eight of her shots. Marshall created space, wide left. I see Oregon State. A little more sense of urgency to get over those screens because Iowa's going to make you pay if you're not. They are. They are. You can't play a drop coverage against a team that's <laughs> used to making jump shots. AJ Murad, who has scored a double figures all four games this year with a nice turnaround. Sonano setting the screen, trying to get it back to her, but that was cut off nicely. That's the cut right there. That's it all day long. You might not have a one-on-one -on -one move with your Monica Sonano back to the basket against Mitrovic, but the pass and the cut. And Iowa is so good when they have off-ball movement. And Ohoffen with the miss. Here's Caitlin Clark. Yaney, who is a good defender, has her work cut out for Sonano with the rare miss. He's led the country in field goal percentage for a couple of years. Kate Martin got a hand on that, and now two on one. Clark with a little head fake and then rolled it in. The look off. I like the look off. Well, that's, again, she's a great assist maker as well as finisher and that time the true point guard that played into her getting that shot largest lead of the game is 11 points the beavers take a timeout clark's got 20. and she as we keep saying makes it look easy the assist no i got it ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. Back here in Portland, Iowa plays some pretty basketball. They sure do. Excellent execution, terrific spacing, great passing team. We're going to watch this play right here. Monica Sanano, if we freeze it right here, look, Caitlin Clark occupies. You got shooters up top occupying movement without the basketball. And Sanano is a terrific one on one scorer. She is also an outstanding facilitator from the post position. I mean, this is just textbook basketball. And when we talked about Iowa early in the first half, not a lot of off ball player movement. 
they are so hard to guard when all five players are moving and they keep you active and engaged. Because they play inside out. Great scores, we know, but you put so much pressure on a defense where the ball goes into the paint first. Run that motion offense for Lisa Bluter. Oregon State down by 11. Shot clock now into single digits. They get it to Mitrovic. Clark comes over to help defensively, and, and Mitrovic just bowls over Gabby Marshall. She doesn't need that dribble. No. She's just got to go right up into the shot. But I'll also say this is the disadvantage of 6'9". You can just tell didn't have the body control mm -hmm. on the catch, which is why she had to go with the dribble. Now Mitrovic is going over to the bench the, uh, <laughs> for Reagan Beers. Gabby Marshall a little, a little sore after taking that knock. Noel Manon coming back in as well for A.J. Marat for Oregon State, who come into this game unbeaten on the season. Wins over Hawaii, Seattle University, Eastern Washington, and Prairie View. Warnock to Sinano. Maney is face guarding Caitlin Clark, shot clock in the single digits. Sinano, just enough of a screen. Clark almost got that tough shot to go and claps her hand in frustration as she crossed midcourt. Looks like she's the kind of player who thinks they're all going in. Well, I mean, think about the difficulty of that shot, yeah. and she is still upset she didn't make it. Whereas most players wouldn't have even gotten it off. Good defense by Sonano on Beers. They're letting them play. They sure yeah. are. And there's some of the, I emotion, like it though. the emotion that we see from Caitlin Clark, a kid from West Des Moines, Iowa. Well, it's interesting with Monica Sonano, the difference in being defended by Mitrovic inside and being defended by Beers inside. Beers much more physical, pushing her off the block. Speaking of pushing off the block, <laughs> Noel Manning just got steamrolled. And one commonality of why Iowa is so great is solid post play. Monica Sonano, as well as Megan Gustafson, four of the, out of the last five years, have led the country in field goal percentage shooting. The commonality in that, to me, is Jan Jensen, the associate head coach for Iowa. Was a tremendous player at Drake in her day, and she continues, doesn't matter if they're undersized or not, to develop great post players for Iowa. She sure does, it seems like year after year. And Olhoffen hit for Oregon State, and then a quick answer for Iowa by Kate Martin. And Jan Jensen played for Coach Bluter and over at Drake and has been with her for all 23 years at Iowa. And Olhoffen's a good basketball player. You think Jan Jensen's one of the best post coaches? Absolutely, I have said that. I mean, I used to go against her as an assistant coach when she was at Drake, I was at Illinois State. And I said it then. And so we're going back 20 something years ago and she's just continued to get better and better. A great recruiter as well, but obviously knows how to develop these post players. And they, Iowa as a staff finds post players that fit their system. And you're absolutely right. The development every year, they get better. They're always incredibly efficient. Molly Davis waited for Amy to get by her before she Put up the shot. Steph, do you remember an undersized post player by the name of Jenny Lillis? <laughs> of course uh, I remember Jenny Lillis. Whatever happened Lillis. to her. Yes. Huh. <laughs> Has she done anything? <laughs> Quite possible. Is Jan, Jan Jensen right there in the middle. Jenny Lillis on some of uh, Lisa Bluter's first teams yeah. at Iowa. And that's, I mean, that's the one I think of when I think of undersized. Yes. Maybe six foot. Mm -hmm. Maybe six one. <laughs> Jensen <laughs> saying that's the way to do it. Iowa, up nine, timeout in Portland. Welcome back to Portland. Iowa with the lead over Oregon State. Scott Rua, very optimistic about the future of this team, and that's one reason why number three recruiting class in the entire country. He is right now without Tamia Gardner, who was McDonald's All-American 
Semi-finalist for Naismith National High School Player of the Year. Out with a non-sports related health issue. But they do expect to get her back and we've seen a lot of Reagan beers. Marta Peach is from Germany and her dad is here. Made the trip from Berlin to Portland. Parents are the best. Yep. Absolutely. There he is. There's dad. I'm serious, thinking, you know, if you put my kid in, maybe it'd be <laughs> Warnock. Same player at the timeout that they ran earlier for her. This time couldn't convert. Nolhofen guarded by Davis. Danny shooting over Clark. Loose ball, battled for. Here comes Clark streaking down the left side. You see just how she's always got her eyes moving. So different than Nika Mule, right? But diff she's, look, where's the defender? Where are they coming behind me? Do I need to create some space? Just a, an awareness of, of where everyone is coming at her and from which angles. Mark with 22 points in 22 minutes of court time. Sonano, good defense, but kept alive momentarily. But Aaron couldn't keep it in bounds. You see on the defensive end of the floor, that's good defense by Caitlin Clark. Ball gets out in transition. Of course, she got to find her. Somebody's got to get in front of her. And look at right there, just that little look. Where is Bindu Yaney? Where is she coming from? Deceptive. I mean, how do you defend her? Because she can shoot the three. She can blow by you. I mean, that's the thing. Speed and transition is tremendous as well when the ball is in her hands. One of the hardest things to teach is just when you have the ball, when you're making a move, how can you go at a pace, but also utilize that vision? Great defensive play by Molly Davis. That is the second block of the game for the undersized Molly Davis, playing with such tenacity here this afternoon. Hey, it doesn't have to be a big girl with the block. She sized it up, timed it perfectly. What I love, did knock it out of bounds, kept it in play to herself to try to maintain possession. Molly Davis, the Central Michigan transfer, listed at 5'7". Two blocks for Molly. That one was so much force, her headband came off. <laughs> but yeah, Coach Bluter thrilled again that she decided to come play at Iowa knowing that she's not going to start. That's old school, right? Absolutely. Just talked about her unselfishness, her savvy, her IQ, her toughness and swag. Wants to be part of the winning team. There's Stolke, the freshman who got blocked by Mitrovic. That's one of those drives that's a blue water. Let's wait for the second. Mm -hmm. but great job by Bindu Yaney to respond off the missed layup. We say it time and time, it leads to a layup on the other end. Bindu Yaney just quick crossover to the left hand. Great touch to finish. Janie's first basket after she missed her first nine field goal attempts. Caitlin Clark getting a well-deserved rest. The feeling she won't be out for long. Stokey a little off balance. Couldn't score over Beers. But Stokey adds an athleticism in the post that Iowa especially missed a year ago. I remember talking to the coaches then about what she would bring and they were beyond excited. And you see, I think the matchup is for her to drive against the bigger post right now with the two bigs in for Oregon State. So Clark out of the game, Martin handling the ball for now. Davis a combo guard. Now on the other side of the floor, Clark's gonna come back in at the next whistle. So that answers that question. Not out for long. Sonano left open, she's been money from there, but that one was short. Another collision. Kate Martin called for that foul. And she's back on the floor. Can't even get her a blow around timeouts. That's what I thought was gonna yeah, happen. Exactly. Caitlin averaging just over 30 minutes a game, but she strikes me as the kind of kid who would be on the, on the right. bench going, yeah. put me in, put me mm -hmm. in, put me in. As a coach, you feel those eyes on you. you yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, Beers got away with it, but she did it. It was a good call by the official. Reagan Beers called for that foul. 
Here's the freshman post, just trying to get position, working hard, but then just Koch try, with that elbow to Stolke. Third personal on Reagan, the freshman from Littleton, Colorado. Part of that good ref uh, freshman class. That's three possessions in a row right there. And decision making once you get in there. But she's a young player, right? So she's right now is being asked to just attack, drive. Lisa Bluter talked to her about going off of two feet. But in a game like this, when they're still in striking distance, got to make sure decision making is key. Annie with a good crossover. Stolke cut her off at the baseline. Clark with the Annie closing goes down. I respect Yaney's closing speed there because I thought Clark was going to get it all the way to the rim. First one on Yaney. I mean, Yaney is in the corner and Kaylin Clark gets it a good five feet ahead of her and you just see Yaney closing in and unfortunately gets called for that foul. Just the fourth team foul, so the inbound as we approach a minute to go in the third quarter. Winner gets UConn on Sunday. Travel call as Sonano could not handle the Clark pass cleanly. And then they have a couple words. Well, Oregon State just doesn't have an answer to that quick screen between Sonano and Clark. I'm not sure I would have an answer with the no, skill of those back, two that individuals. That backside rotation just has to come. You have to force somebody else on the floor to knock down that shot. It's got to be quicker. And Caitlin Clark's ability to deliver that pocket pass quickly is key. Mitrovic way outside beyond the three-point arc. They need a shot. And Olhoffen bottled up. And then Clark gets another block. <laughs> and Caitlin keeps on going. Lisa Bluter's face. I would have made that face, too. I mean, I thought it was going to lead to a lead out. That's exactly. Two straight possessions where Oregon State's forced to bring something up. And that time, Clark there with the block. And unfortunately, <laughs> well, that, of course, that live ball, you want to be able to take that to the other yeah, end. Caitlin's face said it all. Oregon State's missed seven of its last eight shots. And now Clark's going to hold on to it as long as possible to kill the quarter. Sonano screen. Gabby Marshall couldn't get it to go at the end of the quarter. But Caitlin Clark with 22 points, six rebounds, and four assists. What does that Beaver can score? So basketball yesterday, North Carolina came from behind to defeat Oregon. Eva Hodgson, especially late in the game, was terrific offensively. And Alyssa Usby, I know a player, Christy, come on, hustle. I'm sorry, Oregon got Usby the stretch. And that's not a good thing. And Stephanie Suarez, who is brand new for Iowa State, what a difference maker. On both ends of the floor, just dictated the game, ran the floor, altered shot blocked shots and hit a couple of threes as well. And those two teams will be playing in the Phil Knight Invitational 7.30 Eastern Time Sunday evening on ESPN2. A couple of top eight teams. Whoever wins this game will take on UConn Sunday. And the losers will all meet in third place games as well. Pam Ward, Christy Thomas Scuddy, and Stephanie White joining you on the campus of the University of Portland. Clark, that's off the mark. To start things off here in the fourth quarter. Iowa, excuse me, Oregon State shooting just 35% on the day. Another good, Marsh just made some good plays out there on the perimeter defense. That's what Gabby Marshall does. She's one of those gnats, as Christy likes to call them, that's, <laughs> oh, it's always, <laughs> that's always, <laughs> always involved in those plays defensively. Clark misses that time with the one-handed attempt. Yeah. 
Jalen and Mitrovic, the redshirt sophomore from Serbia, with the miss. And Steph, what concerns me about that last shot is that no Oregon mm -hmm. State player made an attempt to go to the boards on that one. One up. Standing out there and knocks down the three. Second team all Big Ten last year. Marshall out there on Van Olhofen, who has 17 points. Van Olhofen cannot get by Gabby Marshall. So Christy, you mentioned it on the other end for Oregon State defending on ball screens. Well, Gabby Marshall's given a clinic right there and how you fight through over and around and recover quickly. Well, and it's not allowing her to get to it because she is in the handle. And Van Olhofen doesn't have a quick enough crossover to be able to close that space and pin her. And Gabby Marshall does a tremendous job getting over the top. That's a third foul on Marshall. And Olhofen gets one. Yaney back into the ball game for Marat. Ben Yaney played high school at here in Portland and actually lost the state title game in 2015 on this floor to a team that Davina Westbrook played on. Martin, good dish over to Sonano who couldn't handle it. And I think that's an area that Lisa Bluter was alluding to you earlier, Steph, is that the chemistry on offense especially yeah. will continue to get better and evolve. We've seen a couple of misses right around the rim, just timing issues that you just need game reps together. And that's the thing is Bindi Laney gets in, in the paint for two. The thing about even a veteran team that plays together over the summer, you're not running at the same pace. You're not utilizing the same movements, the same actions. You do need game reps. You need real defense against you. You do. Clark misses again, and then is called for the foul. Ben Duyani takes the ball baseline, knowing that Sonano is there. She goes to the reverse layup, uses the rim against Sonano. She can get that shot up off the backboard to kiss it in. Yaney played a couple of years at Indiana and then went over to Arizona, finishing up now at Oregon State, which is her third school. Coming back close to home. Yaney telling Manning, reverse it, reverse it. That's the veteran leadership on the floor for Oregon State. So Lexus Aaron has been impressive. Been quiet here in the second half, but knocking down shots early, being another offensive presence. Getting the crowd involved, the lead down to six timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dollar General. Save time, save money every day. We're in gorgeous Oregon. Let's be scenic. When the sun's out, it's beautiful. How about a uh, little beautiful basketball? Shalexis Aaron, please. Shalexis Aaron came in today averaging three points. And how has she got the big bucket today? Effort. Rebound putbacks, cutting without the ball, but the biggest impact she has had on this game. Three of four from deep, and she came in over on the season. And after hitting those long balls, you give her a little space, puts it on the floor, and elevates to knock it down. Just been great for Oregon State here this afternoon. Meanwhile, Iowa, this is a team coming in, averaging 90 points per game. They only have 57 so far. Scored 10 points in the third quarter, just three so far in the fourth. That's 13 points in the second half. Very un-Iowa-like. It is, and you have to give credit to this Oregon State defense. They've done a much better job of making Iowa uncomfortable, of closing the gap in terms of not giving them open looks, and finishing plays. Is 
Tamano clogged things up in a hurry and then got tied up by Van Olhoffen. Possession arrow keeps it with Oregon State. Caitlin Clark 0 for 3 from the floor to start the fourth quarter. Stephanie, I've talked a lot about pace, and pace has been mm -hmm. entirely Oregon, Oregon State, especially this second half. And look at the difference for Iowa. Between the two halves, a whistle out on the floor. They want the basket to count. And the tell two benches. Oregon State off they had counted. Yeah. And then the <laughs> Iowa bench staying on the floor, on the floor. But another difference in the second half is Ben Duyaney's been putting the ball on the floor and just settling for outside shots. Not a shooting foul. Kate Martin tried to save it. Mitrovic trying to get post position on Sonato. Got clock winding down. Mitrovic gets it over to Yaney. Clark gets it. And that's a great box out by Sonano. Really kept Mitrovic off the block, outside the paint, and did a good job of finishing that play with the box. Iowa's gone almost three minutes without a point. Clark finally gets one to go, and she'll have a chance at a three-point play, just her second bucket of the half. And I love how Caitlin Clark is embracing the contact. Now, we've, we've seen her at times in her career try to either avoid it or sometimes uh, flop out of it. Right now, she's embracing the contact. She's finishing stronger. She looks stronger. She's on balance. And I think that's a great example, the clip just shown, of how you have to stay disciplined against Caitlin Clark. Ben Duyaney's done a great job this second half against her, but just slowly comes on that closeout, and it's a rip and go for Caitlin Clark to the rim. Third foul on Mitrovic. Clark now with 25 on the game. It's the lead back to nine. Iowa has led by as many as 11. And then Sonano getting handsy there on the baseline. That is the, th the third on her. Addison O'Grady coming in to give Sonano a break. O'Grady has had some, giving them some good minutes. Now a sophomore out of Aurora, Colorado. Yaney working on Martin, lost the ball temporarily. Mannon left open. Three off the mark, but Mitrovic got the rebound and then is tied up. Mitrovic cannot bring that ball down. You basically take away any advantage you have at 6'9 when you drop the ball. Great job by Warnock, Warnock to tie her up. The one thing that Scott Ruick had talked about was just you know, her ability to learn how to play low and to be strong. You can play low without bringing the ball low, but a strong center of gravity, a strong base. Nice, no drop. There's O'Grady. Caitlin Clark through the defense. Once again, no weak side drop by Oregon State, and Iowa just makes it look easy. And it's happened time and time again, and being able to make that adjustment, force an extra pass. Well, and that was one thing Scott Root said to us yesterday. Iowa will be a crash course in adjustments yeah. for our team. We'll have to adjust on the fly, and that's one area that they just have not quite done it yet. Well, when you have a young team, it's hard. It's hard to make those adjustments in, in huddles, but you see it right here. There's no drop on the backside. Alexis Aaron is not there, and Caitlin Clark continues to be terrific in terms of her decision making when to attack and when to facilitate. Kenna Warnock just committed her second personal foul, and that has put the Beavers in the bonus now for the rest of the fourth quarter. Up, 
And Old Hoffman now with an even 20. Martin couldn't get it. O'Grady stopped by Van Olhoffen. That was unfortunate because I love the pace of that cut that she couldn't finish. That was a great cut. It opened up the offensive rebound, but terrific second effort by Van Olhoffen. Clark working hard to try to rid herself of Yaney. They don't get her the ball when she was open momentarily. Clark dribbled into trouble and was fouled. That was interesting because when Clark first got the ball, there was no one on this right side. Mm -hmm. That was going to be a complete clear out for her to go. And then a teammate cut, and luckily she was able to draw the foul there because that took away her opportunity to turn the corner. Manning just picked up her second for the Beavers. Right-handed floater. Uh, again, just continue to be impressed with her pace. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing to be able to get by people and get to the rim. It's another thing to be able to, to, to knock down three-point shots, but to be able to do all three levels on balance, in control. Mark takes a timeout. After chasing down the rebound, Caitlin at her season average right now with 27 points. Caitlin Clark's inbounding the ball, and you've got to just body up there. Instead, comes around. This is just too easy because she turns the corner because the defense is chasing. And to Steph's point, the body control as well as the touch to elevate and put it in. You know, one of the things when you're defending a great player is you can't defend the action. You have to take the action away. If you're trying to chase and defend Caitlin Clark all, all game long, she's going to crush you. She's going to make you pay. You have to take her away. How do you take it away? Well, you don't let her go where, he, where she wants to go. So you, you top block cuts or you down or ice on ball screens. You force her to make adjustments. Now, she's a great player, so she's going to make adjustments. But you give her one choice or two choices. You don't give her all three every time that she has the basketball. And you can see, finding the open player, this is how she started the ball game, facilitating, getting to the paint. Again, strong finish off of two feet in transition, the little look off. We, of course, know she can knock down three-point shots, but this is every other way that she can score the basketball, just the impact that she makes offensively for this Hawkeye team. Caitlin is one rebound away from a double-double. Oregon State switching up the defense here. They were trying to just get the ball out of Clark's hands there with the double team. I like the extended 2 3. Got to cover the middle, though. I was going to say, if the backside rotates up. Got to cover the middle. Yeah, that left Marshall wide open and she buried it. After Oregon State got close, Iowa has extended back to a 13 point advantage. And I think this is the lesson from the K State loss. Mm -hmm. they, they let K State stay around, stay around, and it was getting eerily similar there before Lisa Bluter made that timeout call. Yaney. There's some pressure from Oregon State, but Clark got it over and tells Gabby to give it right back to her, and Marshall does just that. Martin thought about taking the three. Warnock left open, hit it. It's been a soft spot the last couple of trips down. We're not gonna kill you. I mean, she's just one of those two here, two there, a couple rebounds. But it's interesting too to see the lineup on the floor for mm -hmm. Lisa Bluter down the stretch against K-State. She had a couple young players out there. She's going with the veterans here today. And we're gonna see the way that Iowa's attacking this extended 2-3 zone. Certainly want to get the ball out of Caitlin Clark's hands, but watch Caitlin Clark initiate, send Gabby Marshall right to that free throw line. That is a soft spot in the zone, and you have to rotate. The hard part, though, about defending a team like Iowa, when you get really extended, they can all shoot the three. Mm. And then that leaves Monica Sonato, what on one down low. Absolutely. Pick your poison. Shot clock into single digits, under a minute and a half to go in the game. Sonano wants it back. 
Got the high arc on it because 6'9 Mitrovic was standing there. I'd want it too if I've been as hot at from the high post as Monica Sonano has been yeah. today. Well, when you put in the work, you shoot it with confidence. And, you know, I, I, I love the way that Caitlin Clark is able to deliver the pass. There aren't a lot of players that can make that kind of pass in that situation. But the pocket isn't there, right? Sonano's pop, popping behind the pocket. All right, Marshall. Clipped by Van Ohoffen going for the basketball. And the Iowa Hawkeyes, a minute away from playing UConn on Sunday. Well, you see right here, Caitlin Clark rejecting the screen. She's got her eyes on Monica Sinano, and she's able to make that behind the back pass. You don't see a lot of, of college basketball players that are able to make that pass. That the angle, aren't doing the timing, it right. showboat. Absolutely, absolutely. But it's, it's efficient. You don't have to stop and pivot or pass over a defender. And it helps that pace yes. that you keep talking about as far as rhythm shooting, cuts, and everything else. You see Caitlin Clark, one rebound and two assists away from what would be her seventh triple-double of her career. Had back-to-back 30-point -back triple-doubles last year. Well, we got to get a defensive board and a couple of assists. <laughs> Make this happen. Can I just give a quick shout out to Gabby Marshall? She has yes. been on the floor at least six times today, <laughs> and she has been huge defensively for them as well. I see her shaking out her right hand now. I think everything is going to hurt. Clark directing traffic, tells Marshall to go to the other side. Bounce pass, Sonano. Clark, oh, everybody wanted her to shoot it, including me. She's trying to get those assists now. Oh! Sonano rolls it in. Extra pass. How about Monica Sonano, though? Off the move, being able to catch that pass, pivot around, and make the, make it back. A lot of the time, bigs, when they're rolling, they don't have the body control to be able to stop on a dime and get it back out. And this is a player who, when she was a freshman, backed up Megan Gustafson, barely got off the bench. You think she had a daily tutelage? Yeah, Megan you got Jan Jensen, and then, yeah, in yes. practice, you got Gustafson and has developed into this. Well, um, you see it right here, just the footwork, the balance, being able to stop on a dime, find her open teammate, and then the ball movement, the extra pass and the strong finish. With the left hand. You know, Clark at the free throw line, and I know we've asked Lisa Bluter if she ever thought that Sonano would turn into this, and she was at heaven's name. She really thought that she would be a backup post. But she got in the gym, worked with Coach Jansen, worked hard, obviously, on her own, and is elite. Great things happen caliber. when you do the work. How about that, huh? I don't think elite's a good enough word. I'm sorry. All right, what word would you use? I don't have, I'm Academic not as smart as you. <laughs> Beyond special. That's very articulate. <laughs> so I was UConn. Are you looking forward to that on Sunday? Oh, yes. I, I am eager to see how UConn tries to attack Caitlin Clark from a defensive perspective. Their defense, we talk about AZ Fudd in the offense, but the defense for UConn has been special to this point in the season. Absolutely it has. And can they stay out of foul trouble on the interior? I mean, Aaliyah Edwards has to be able to stay on the floor. She's got to be able to match up inside with Sonano. But I expect an up and down game mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. And that'll be 1 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. That's 10 o'clock local. We have a game at 10 o'clock as well. That's early. It's two East Coast teams. That's early. They're fine. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> They're young. So Caitlin Clark, 28 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. But the supporting cast, really a, a good team effort. It's a team. Yes. And, and that's why I think they're dangerous. Take away Caitlin Clark, she's still going to facilitate, and the veteran core crew is there to support her. And you see the, the respect for Scott Ruick and the staff. I know Coach Ruick is a big Caitlin Clark fan. So uh, Oregon State going to play Duke on Sunday in the third place game, Iowa and UConn for the championship. So for Christy Thomas Scuddy and Stephanie White. And the rest of our great crew, I'm Pam Ward. As we say so long for Portland, we will see you back here on Sunday.
Bill Knight Legacy continues Sunday, 11 p.m. on ABC.